let's talk about diagnostic tests. Diagnostic tests for ACE can be found online. You can also do the hard copy. Just Google ACE diagnostic test. I'll put the link below in the comments. It's really easy to find. Just make sure you do ACE or School of Tomorrow diagnostic test. There are seven subjects covered by the diagnostic test. It's math, English, word building, word building, spelling, and then reading actually covers science, social studies, Bible reading, literature, and creative writing. I think that's everything. So just so you know, all of those are covered in reading. So it's four tests that you're gonna be taking. Math obviously is for math, English is for English, word building is spelling again, and the reading covers all the other subjects. One reason reading covers so much is because the social studies and science is a lot of comprehension. So the testing for reading covers a lot of comprehension, how well they understand what they read, how well they can digest that and process the information out. The English, a lot of times if you're coming from public school, the English you'll be a little bit behind in, you'll skip a lot of gaps. You can do whatever you want with these test results. The test results will come as they passed or they failed. And if they failed, it'll tell you what paces they need. So maybe there was a pace that talked about the silent GH and they didn't pass that one. Like they didn't, they didn't recognize those when they were doing the diagnostic test. It'll have you go back and do that one pace and then maybe skip five paces ahead and do the next one. So it does a really good job. I think we always hope the diagnostic tests are really intuitive. This one especially isn't. It doesn't go, you did first grade and then you did second grade and then you did third grade. Oh, you missed one and third, let's go back to second and here's the fact. It just goes first, second, third. They suggest that you go 36 paces back, so that's going to be three grades back. So if your child is in sixth grade, you'll wanna start them in third grade, which also is a big confidence booster. They'll go, oh, I know all these, these are easy. And then they get through and when they get to sixth grade, it'll get a little bit harder. ACE suggests not putting your kid in a grade that's higher. So if your kid is in sixth grade and they test into eighth grade paces, they suggest you don't do that. That's up to you. Um, my seventh grader tested into etymology, which etymology is his ninth grade spelling, and it's the last spelling they have. She was an excellent speller. So I just let her do etymology and then we stopped. And I think that was a fine decision. It's really up to you on whether you do that or not. The testing does not, I don't believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe it covers through high school. So it goes up to like ninth grade and then I don't think they do any placements in high school. The reason for that is either you've had American history or you haven't. Either you've had algebra one or you have it. So I think that's why they don't do the diagnostic test for high school. At least I don't believe they did when we were taking the test. Another thing about diagnostic tests is I've heard people go through every year, they just give their kids a diagnostic test and it's something that they do to find out how well they learned, if there's any gap paces they can go back and do. I think you can use it for that. I've never heard ACE recommend it. I know schools don't do that, but I don't think there's anything that says don't do that. Like some other curriculums say, just use the diagnostic test for the first time, don't do it again. ACE doesn't say that. I think that's permissible. I don't think that's a problem. I will say that there are some grades you wanna make sure that you don't skip. For instance, third grade English is where you learn cursive. So if you have a third grader coming in and they test really high in English, like fifth grade, you're gonna run into some problems if they don't know cursive. So that would be something maybe to ask somebody that already has ACE and say, hey, what is, you know, my kid tested in the fifth grade this, is that okay to skip that far ahead? Should I do that? Or try to stay around your age grade like ACE recommends, put them no further than their age. So if they're in third grade, you put them in third grade even if they test in the fourth grade. I know we as parents want them to be advanced, it's really exciting if they're advanced, but that's not always the best thing for them because you don't want them to struggle. A, a very wise person told me one time that they would rather their kids have a couple of subjects that are really easy for them then have all hard subjects that they're on you know, level and they're challenged every single day they get down, it's really hard for them. So that, I've kept that in mind when my kids seem to race through social studies or science or word building's really easy, but math is really slow. 
I just try to keep that in mind because it's really, really nice to have something that you just go, oh, okay, I can do this, especially after you're struggling in another subject. So that's something to keep in mind by keeping them on level that it, there's gonna be struggles in some areas, but not everything, and that's okay. Also, you can always add more pages if they're flying through it, or look at the next pace and go, wow, we really know this stuff, we don't need to do this one. That's the awesome thing about this curriculum, is you get to pace yourself and figure out what's easy and what's hard and slow down or speed up. Oh, another thing about testing that I don't wanna forget is the test does not stop. It goes on forever. So just remember for you, as your student's doing it, it does first grade, and it tests you all the questions on that. You get whatever right, whatever wrong, then it does second, they call it level, second level, and it tests you on that, right or wrong, you keep on going third level. So if you're waiting for it to stop when you don't know the answers, it's not gonna do that. I don't feel like they explain that very well, so that's really important to recognize. Okay, okay, we're in sixth grade and my first grader is still clicking the button. Maybe I should stop. Just a reminder know that that you could probably stop after they get maybe if they seem like they don't know anything past their grade level totally fine they're not supposed to you're good another thing i wanted to point out is that it is okay to be in a different number pace here is a chart that tells the different pace numbers so they call them levels in ac not grades but this is first grade second grade second level third grade and it tells the pace numbers and what they're supposed to do so Grade one is pace 1001 through 1012. And so obviously second grade starts out in 1013 and goes through 1024. This is priceless to me. I have it right next to my filing cabinet when I'm finding the paces or when I wanna know what grade to look to find you know, a random pace. I look at this and I go, oh, fifth grade. Okay, pull that open. I will put a link to this below because I think everybody might need this. You might want to laminate it. Anyway, that is just a quick overview of the diagnostic test and what you need to use that for and how it works. Hopefully that helps. I would suggest doing it on a computer, not on your phone. It is possible to do it on your phone, so if you're traveling, that might be the way to go. But it also is a little glitchy. I noticed as I push things, it would just like scroll up to the top of the page, and I think that would get frustrating for students as they went along. Um, one more thing I want to mention is that the diagnostic test is the same as a placement test. So you might know that, maybe not, but placement, if you want to know where your student places, what grades they're in, that would be what you would want to do. I hope this helps. Ask any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much.